maybe if I hadn't seen Murder on the Orient Express, I would have liked this one better. If I didn't have that movie to compare this one to. Like, if this had been a standalone movie, maybe I would have enjoyed it more. But because I did see the other one, which was so quick, which had actors who didn't miss a beat, this one, by comparison, just isn't as fun. Now, you don't need to have seen Murder on the Orient Express to understand this movie, apart from, like, one character returning. And he, and they, and they even, even then, they kind of established that he's friends with the, with the main detective. So even if you haven't seen it, you can still kind of infer that. But I do recommend watching the original Murder on the Orient Express just because there is kind of a twist involving this character kind of near the end uh, that I won't really spoil that much. But it, it has a lot more emotional weight if you have seen the previous one, though having just watched this one, it does have a little bit more weight to it. But anyway, but yeah, the major issue with this movie, though, is the pacing. Honestly, the pacing is the huge uh, problem with this movie. They really needed to tighten up the way the story moves along. The movie is called Death on the Nile. And the actual death, the actual mystery around which the whole story revolves, doesn't even happen until an hour into the movie. Like, halfway through the movie. Halfway through this movie is when the mystery starts. And I get it. You have to establish setting. You have to establish suspects. But, again, Murder on the Orient Express did that so well. It established the suspects and the setting so well in, like, half that time. And this one just took forever to get going. And there's honestly not as much energy with this cast. Like, they all do a good job, but they don't bounce off of each other as well as the cast of the other one. There aren't any bad performances, but you can tell there's just not as much energy as this one. And although, surprisingly, Russell Brand, though. So Russell Brand was kind of the surprising performance here because he can be a pretty dramatic act. You know, he's typically the rock star, goofy kind of character. But here, he gives a dramatic performance, which both surprised me and was actually kind of refreshing. Now, it, it is a well-shot movie. It is well-directed. And it captures the time period it's set in really well. And for the most part, yeah, it's, it's pretty well-directed. Like, like, the tracking shots and everything from the first one, everything that was well-directed about the first one is still on display here. It's just that the script and the story really need to tighten up the pacing and it just wasn't as interesting. It's perfectly fine. I didn't hate the movie, but I didn't love the movie. It's the kind of movie that you should just wait to rent at Redbox. And even then, just wait to rent it on a weekend where your first choice was out of stock. So you don't need to rush out to see it. You can wait to rent it. I would give this movie a C, a 7 out of 10, and a 3 out of 5 stars.